Today we're showing you how to stitch together your eyelet bag. This is our featured eyelet bag pattern that we've made on knitting needles and also on the loom. So either pattern you're following, you'll be able to stitch this bag together. You can also make an optional liner, which we will include the video links down in the video description below. Um, you're going to make your stack of eyelet squares. You can find on our tutorials we already have and our handles or straps you can make and attach to the very top. So today we're going to be showing you how to backstitch this together, how to lay it out, put your stitch markers in, and sew it up right here on Good Knit Kisses. We'll see you soon. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. To get the pattern for our eyelet bag, go down to the video description in the box below and get that link. We also have a right and left-handed video tutorial, so get those down there as well. Now, the pattern for this bag is going to also include the pattern and video links for making the squares. You're gonna need 13 of them and making two of these straps. So you'll have tutorials for those as well. And then you also have an optional uh, liner and we'll have instructions um, to put it into your knit bag. Uh, the tutorial and instructions originally were for crochet and we'll give you a little bit of a guideline. I'll just touch on it real quick just for the visually minded here. You're going to be making your liner to where uh, you're going to sew it in right below where these eyelets are. So on the inside you're going to go right along this line and you're going to want to use a thread that matches your main bag color so that it hides. But other than that it's done nearly exactly the way the crochet one is. And if you want to check out that crochet pattern tutorial and a bag, there are links down below for that as well. All right, go ahead and grab your supplies. The main thing you're going to need is a um, matching yarn for your squares and you're going to need a tapestry needle and about 14 of these large stitch markers. They're going to be large enough to fit in the corner of four of these squares here. So be sure and get those and join me. We're going to start stitching this together. All right, we're going to lay out our squares. If you've made them all, you've got 13 of them and already woven on the tails. And we've put some stitch markers at the top where we did the bind off. It's all on the right side and I've done a little bit of light steaming or blocking. Um, you, I suggest that you do that as well. Um, the stitch markers on the right side at the same end just show you if you're facing them all the same direction or if you want to quarter turn each one, whatever you like to do and then have your stitch markers to the side. And you can even have a contrasting yarn if you don't have stitch markers large enough. You do need about 14 of them. So I'm gonna set this to the side and you need a large workspace so that you can lay these all out. We are going to face them right side down. I'm gonna show them right side up just so you see how the layout's going to look and then I'll flip them over. All right, so go ahead and lay them out. You're gonna do four across the top and I'm gonna use all of my screen here, so it's going to show about half of them when it gets a little too far away. The top of my screen is going to be basically the top or the opening of the bag. All right, so we have four across, and then I'm gonna do four across again. All right, and then this is um, shifted over, as you can see, like this. Okay, and then we're gonna come back down and do four more here. And I'm gonna switch these. It has a stitch marker already on the back. I mean, you'll see why I'm doing that in a moment. All right, so here we go. I've got one, two, three, four across the top, then the next four, then one, two, three, and one more. And then we have our final square, our 13th square. It's gonna come right here. I know it's a little bit off your frame, but be sure and look at that diagram down in the video description in the links below. All right, so if we were to count these and label them, you're gonna see number one is up here. This is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 of our squares. That's how they're labeled on the diagram. And you'll see a little red line here and here and down here, and those are gonna be fold marks. So now you wanna go ahead and flip all of these over so that the right side is facing down. All right, so go ahead and do yours. And once you have them all over, you're going to um, start pinning the corners together.
All right. So just take your stitch marker and you're going to go to each corner and clip them together. So we have one here and another one here. Make sure all of those are flipped over. And there's no rhyme or reason how I'm doing them here. Um, you can pull these stitch markers off and rearrange when you're stitching it together and we'll get into that uh, later. But this corner is gonna have four together. All right, and so on. So you're gonna keep going around. There will be some here at the top of the bag that's just going to be three. So go ahead and place those on. So I'm gonna show you where all of these placements are, just loosely laying them on here. All right, so when I come back, um, you're gonna see that I have these pinned on, and I'm gonna show you how to fold this together to get to the next point. We'll see you in a moment. All right, I have these all pinned together, and I'm gonna reveal why I have this one pinned on um, what you're seeing as the wrong side. So go ahead and just take another stitch marker and just kind of put it in between, uh, or in the middle of one of these here on this middle row, um, probably this one or this one here. Um, it's gonna represent um, the, the, what we're gonna do is the front side. So just pick one that you're gonna have as your, your front of your bag, and then that way, um, when you see the seaming diagram, you'll be able to tell when I'm calling something the front or the back. It, it's just for uh, diagram purposes so that you can kind of follow along the pattern of the seaming um, going from one side to the next, okay? So uh, now that you have this, um, I'm gonna go ahead and flip this whole thing over like this. Okay, and then we're gonna put the, um, the wrong side um, uh, on the outside. So I'm going to put right sides together. I'm gonna take over this small section and lay it on top of the larger section here. So you can see these five in the middle are on top. And then where you can see the right sides uh, exposed here, I'm just gonna flip this over, okay, fold it. And that's actually was um, square number 13. And I'm gonna open up the stitch marker and pin it on, and then come down here and pin on the rest of this. You can take it out if you need to and pin it again. All right. And then um, down here at the bottom, you're just going to flip this up. This would have been um, square number uh, 11. So just fold that over and we're gonna take this one out. I'm going to repin that so it's easier to get to pin all three of these corners here. This is going to be the bottom of our bag and I'm going to pin this corner and then we'll come and do this one. All right. Okay, so now our bag is essentially together. We have the wrong side facing out, and then I have my um, stitch marker here in the middle to show me what is the front, I'm just gonna use quotes, the front of my bag, if you need to kind of put it in the middle so it's not so distracting, and then it's like you're not getting confused here, just put it right in the middle, just pick a, a stitch, and do it that that way. So this part right here is going to be the opening of our bag or the top. Okay. So um, here we go. We're going to be um, stitching this together, and we're going to be using a back stitch technique. You're going to need your um, uh, tapestry needle and your yarn, and you're going to match this right here. I'm going to show you on a sample with a contrasting color so that you can see the technique, and then we'll apply it to our bag and I will show you, after I show you the technique, I'm gonna show you the seaming direction that we're gonna start on, okay? All right, so set this aside. I'm gonna show you how to uh, backstitch this. 
right, let's do the back stitch. I've got a nice bright sample and my yarn uh, is contrasting, so you should be able to see that stitch. In this case, I'm just gonna fold mine over with the right side spacing, and we're gonna be working along this edge and matching it up, and I'm working with the contrast yarn. On your sample, you are going to work with the same color of yarn, but if you wanna make an extra sample to the side and do this um, to understand the stitch pattern, the back stitch, then be my guest. Also, this back stitch is really good because it's going to be strong. Um, if you see my tutorial on a Bigford seam where you're seaming together a garter stitch, it's not going to be as strong as the back stitch. So I would challenge you to try this one. Uh, go ahead and cut out uh, your um, or cut your length that you need for sewing, and you're going to measure the width of the seam that you're going to make. So in this case, if I want to make a seam as long as this square here, I'm just going to measure the width across with my yarn, and then I'm gonna do it three times. So this is one, two, and three, and then I've given myself a generous tail on both ends. So that's how I got that number. And then we're gonna go ahead and thread this needle, and we're gonna fold these right sides together. And we're gonna be working in between this two stitch border, in between the stitches. So you have two stitches on top and two down at the bottom. And if you notice, we have all these ridges lined up. And if you want to go ahead and line them up and maybe put a stitch marker in here to make sure that you stay uh, in line, then you could do that. I'm just kind of following it over till I get to the corner here. And um, I'm gonna go beyond my actual corner and we're gonna go in um, a couple of stitches. So I'm gonna start where this, um, these two garter ridges are. This is actually the corner here. So I'm gonna go in between the purl and then I'm gonna come right along on this side and go in between the purl stitches and that ridge, okay? So we're going um, one stitch over from the corner towards the front and leave a tail. All right, so we're gonna go back uh, over one stitch, go back this way. So I'm going through these two stitches at the top and through, this is the salvage edge and then through this back part here. Pull all the way through, all right. Now we're going to go up two stitches, so we're gonna pass where we went in originally, okay, and then come over. So on this uh, garter stitch, it's really easy to see because we're going to skip where the ridge was that we had before and we're gonna go into the next ridge. So we're gonna go in and make sure you're clearing those two stitches at the top here and then go into the next ridge area, pull all the way through. All right, and then we're gonna go back down where we had come out before, so we're going back over through here, going all the way through both pieces of fabric, all right, here, and there's these two in the back. Now what I do is I actually then just kind of guide my um, needle past this little line for the stitch and go around it, and then this loop here um, is not going to be shown when we open it up. I like to do this. It's just an extra little, to me, like a safety thing, so I don't see this loop on the other side of my work. So we pull through, and you can see you have two nice stitches lined up, and you have this little loop in the back. Now we're going to go down two on this side, so I'm going to skip um, over this uh, ridge here and come through. And you can see how it's, we're gonna have to skip back to finish that out. So we're gonna pull all the way through and then go back where this uh, stitch is to complete it and go through our little ridge and move your stitch, or move your um, needle underneath that loop back there and pull through. All right, so that's what the back looks like. It has this little uh, loop in the back and then the front goes through every ridge like here. So now what we're doing is we're skipping over this next ridge and coming through this one in the front, pull through, make sure to get that tail out of there. Okay. And then come back down. All right. And when I come through, make sure we are 
coming back uh, here and under again. Okay, so you're just going to continue along that way until you get to the very end, and that is the back stitch. So I'm going to do a few, mo few more and I'll turn it inside out so you can see what that looks like. All right, pause your video. I'll see you there. All right, I've come down to the end. You can see how uh, that looks here on this front side and then on the back. Um, I'm down at the corner area and um, when you, we start sewing it together, when you get to the corners, you may need to just do sort of a whip stitch to get around it and jump a corner, but um, you don't have to be so precise about the back stitch, but you will leave a bit of a selvage in the corner um, area. Just make sure and don't go down um, more than one stitch in or else you'll have a problem with puckering at your corner, uh, that kind of thing. So I'm coming out right here. I'm gonna go over one more to that corner and come here and back down right there. Okay, so let's turn this inside out. All right, so when you're moving, um, when you're using the um, matching color, you can see how this is going to make your eyelets Let's see if I can stick my fingers in here and see. You can see how the eyelets are going to look. And if you steam this out or um, block it, it'll actually lay a lot flatter than what I'm showing it here. Of course, this looks like a sleeve, so it's not behaving the same as in my bag. But you can see how it's still going to look like it maintains a two-stitch um, border here with the um, eyelids inset and a nice little steam block flat will um, show that. Now I did this very loose and you can see this other color um, but uh, just make sure that you keep your stitches uh, consistent and that will match and it will look really good and it will have that seam on the inside which is perfectly fine on the inside of your bag. And if you don't like these seams then having a um, liner in your bag is going to be really good. All right so let's jump over to the actual bag. I'm going to show you um, the process of uh, how you're going to seam together uh, and I'll, you'll be able to compare that with the diagram we have in the pattern. Okay, so we do have instructions for right and left-handed, and in this tutorial, I am actually right-handed, but we will flip it in the left-handed um, version. So I'm gonna try and not use the words right and left, unless I'm talking about right, the right side or correct side. Um, but in this case right now, I'm marking what's called the front, only because I need to show you um, when we talk about certain sides and looking the diagram, which side is facing up for this moment of the seam. So we're gonna begin with seam number one, and um, we're going to start on this, um, this edge here. So if you look at the bottom, and you're gonna go one over to this side, to this square here, and this particular corner right here. So on the right-handed, it's the um, lower right diagonal edge on the front, and on the left-handed, it's the um, lower um, left, okay, over here. And we're going to be working downward to the bottom of the bag in a diagonal. So you're going to start your stitching here, and you'll want to um, remove the stitch marker and maybe place it right here. And you're only going to be working with these two for your edge. You'll be picking this up and doing the seam just as we started and pulling in um, from here. Okay, so your edge is going to look like this right here. Okay, and so you're going to work all the way down until you get right here. And then we're going to turn our seam and we're going to face this direction. And so you're going to be working with these two right here. So it's going to connect here to here, and you're just gonna ignore this back area, and you'll end up picking those things up later. So just ignore them, and if you need to take your stitch marker and move it to the back to pick up the corner that you're not actually working with at that moment, that's totally fine. So um, if you need to add a little bit of an extra stitch to kind of make a turn, that's okay, as it's all on the back of your work. So we're gonna work all the way along here, and go in this direction to this corner up here. So making a diagonal to this upper corner. So work all the way through, take your stitch markers off if you need to, and making that seam just like this. All right, so then we're going to move on to the next part where we flip this over, and then you will be up here. And then you're gonna work your way down, all the way down to here, 
and complete seam number one. So if you are measuring your um, amount that you need for yarn, you're gonna measure um, uh, here, okay, once, and then here, and then here. Take that length and multiply it times three, and then add two long strands for um, your tails. And that's how much yarn you're gonna need to do seam one. All right, so go ahead and do that. Pause your video when we come back. I'm gonna show you the location of seam number two. You should be um, completed when you are down on the, the back side, and you've done this diagonal and you're down here. All right, pause your video. I will see you there. Ha ha, I'm just kidding. I want to just, <laughs> I wanted to tease you. Of course, I'm going to show you how to start. So I went ahead and I uh, took off my stitch marker right here and um, I'm going to begin. So we're going to take this part here and I've already cut my length of my yarn. We're going to come up through the corner and make sure that you've got all this lined up. So I see my ridges are all lined up. Visually do that. All right, here we go. So that is my corner. So I'm gonna come right here. Come through, pull through a whole lot of yarn and get my tail. All right, need a nice long tail. And then we're gonna come back one to that corner, pull all the way through. You can see how it's harder to see with the, the same color yarn. That's why I showed you the other way first. All right, and then now I'm going to skip over where that tail was and we're gonna come um, down two stitches down here, basically down two ridges, and come back up through the front here, and pull all the way through. That's a lot of yarn. <laughs> All right, and then we can come back to where we had originally uh, come out the front. And it's, of course, harder to see. That's why you wanna practice. And then you'll see, it's a little clearer, but you can see this loose yarn where that back stitch was. So I wanna make sure and get my needle not on the front part of it, but towards the back of it, and then pull through. And that completes one back stitch. And you can see how this is a lot of yarn. So I wanna show you a, um, a little trick. So I've got a lot of length here. I'm just gonna pull through my tail. I don't wanna do it too much because I don't wanna accidentally sew it in, but it, it'll eliminate having to pull through so much yarn all the time. Okay, so that makes it a little bit better. All right, so I came through the back, so I'm gonna go over two. You can see where it comes out here. I'm gonna go over two ridges and come to the front again, pull through. Got a bit of a I got a little fly that popped in, a little gnat. <laughs> Sorry, that was weird. Um, and then pull all the way through here. And, oh, and this one I went over too far. So you can see this is like really long compared to this one. So I'm gonna have to back off and go back through here. And if you need to take it out of your needle to figure it out, then you can do that. So. All right, so I went over too far and then come back through here. Okay, and you can see that these stitches are uh, similar. Okay, and then come back one, 
and through there. All right. Okay, so um, it's going to be tedious to, tedious to show you all the same color on here. So you're going to work all your way down to this corner. And then um, I'll meet you back up just to show you one corner and turning just so you can see how to do it once. And then it's going to be really repetitive. So um, once you have this stitch down and to work with the corner, you'll really tell how that is. And then I'll go over all the seams with you here in a moment. All right, we'll see you then. Okay, so I'm at this corner here where we're going to start going up uh, diagonally and I can go ahead and take off my stitch marker and I'm a few stitches from the corner, um, but we do need to kind of um, start picking up this one. Now I'm going to ignore the, um, the one, the part behind where this is folded, the square is folded over. So we're just going to be working from the corner on uh, this side of it that's facing us and this top edge up here. Uh, it's easier to go ahead and just try and line this up first before we begin and line up all these ridges and if you need to visualize and see uh, these two in this corner easier you can go ahead and clip the next two together so you can really see what ridges line up okay so these are like this. I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but um, all my little ridges line up really well. Okay, so um, this little corner is a little harder to tell. So these two are together and I'm just coming from here. So I need to uh, remember that this part on the back is going to be turned. So I can kind of stitch all this together here. Okay, so I'm sort of a, uh, fudging <laughs> right here so um, come along and I'm gonna go I'm coming out this area I'm gonna come over to this next ridge here through two stitches and I'm gonna come on to um, that um, square in the back first pull through and I'm holding these other ones over here okay and finish that out And now we're going to jump over to this next ridge here for this seam. Make sure I'm going through two stitches. Let's see. One, two. And here. I haven't quite moved on yet. I want to go back through here and come um, back to that other set of uh, two squares and through that other stitch before I was in there. This is when I still kind of fudge and I pick up the very edge here and the edge here. Make sure to grab that little part of the back stitch, come through. And this is where like, if you need to add an extra little whip stitch or come around um, to stitch together the corners, um, that's okay. Alright, so now I'm going to come and skip where I was in before, come down to this ridge, make sure I'm going through two stitches, come down to the next ridge that matches up, go through those two stitches, pull through. Alright, and then come back. There we go, and we went through that back stitch again. And I'll be coming back through this area when I pick up this other corner so I don't have to be as tight this first go round and I can tighten up that corner if I need to afterward. But if you get it too tight here, you might have too much puckering on the front, okay, on the actual right side, I shouldn't say front, on the right side of your project. Okay, so then just kind of skip down to that next ridge just as you were doing before and it's seriously repetitive of what you were doing and you're going to go all the way across. Let's just finish this one out. Okay, so you're going to continue working all the way across this diagonal and turn it over 
and continue working back down on the other side, but it'll look like you're coming down this direction and you'll be down here on the, um, on the back uh, of the work, or yeah. <laughs> I just realized I started, this is the back and then um, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna fix this here. I just, I sat here and told you and you probably got confused because when I started working on it, I started down here and I had already flipped this over. So I'm just going to call it out right on the video. This is technically the front. Okay. So we're on the front and um, when we finish, you're going to be on the back side, and it'll look like you're down on this side over here. Okay. All right. Continue on and I will see you at that point. Coming to the end of seam one and we're back to where um, we had uh, turned the corner so you can see the beginning part and it had worked this direction and I'm on the back side of it so I have what looks like I'm coming to the end of the corner but really the corner is down here so I uh, just kind of finish that out and I'll show you where I am let's see it comes out here I'm gonna go here and through Still have quite a bit of strand left. Let's see, I just did that ridge. Now I need to come to this ridge. Where it goes in the corner, it's a little tight. You might look like it only has one stitch at the edge. I'm just going to go right in between there. It almost looks like I'm going through that bump of the the pearl. I'm going to come through here and pull all the way through and go back down where that came out. Actually, that's right there. Get the extra little strand from the back stitch. Pull through. And then I'm going to connect at the corner. So I'm just going to come around the other side here and come up through that other corner that I had done already. And then just go through a couple of these stitches to finish it off. Just a couple of little whip stitches and then make a loop. Oh, I didn't really leave a very big loop, but make a loop and go through it again and pull through and you can knot it and then uh, go ahead and weave in your tail into um, this seam here that you've already done and trim that off. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then uh, cut it off. And now this is the, the back of your work. Remember the um, front is the part with this stitch marker in the middle. Okay, so we're on the back and it looks like we finished uh, this angle here down here. So now we're going to start again. It looks like the same place except we're on the back side. And so we're gonna come back to this area here just as it looked before. Measure out your yarn and begin again. Start here, work all the way down to the bottom and work up on the diagonal, flip it over to the front side and complete that diagonal that goes down. So you can see right here, this is what my ridge looks like. And um, go ahead and work on seam two. Pause your video, I will meet you back uh, to show you how to work on seam three. See you soon. I'm coming to my first corner on seam two uh, where I'm uh, going over the seam one. And I just wanna show you how I'm handling it here. So I kept this one, um, it's, it's snug, but it's nice and loose, uh, loose enough to where it's not like really drawn in together uh, on seam one. So uh, seam two, I'm just gonna come right up to it, um, about the same amount of tension. And I'm right here and um, I want to come over a stitch. So I'm gonna actually come underneath all this and come underneath uh, this original seam here pull through all right and then I'm gonna come back where I was and when I come out again I'm actually gonna come underneath the other side I'm trying to go around this little um, back stitch from the last uh, seam from seam one just going to pull all the way through all my slack. All right, and there we go. We've tied up that middle 
spot here. We're going to come over to our next uh, our next ridge. Going through those stitches and then through these stitches here. Oh, gosh, I'm so sorry. That was really tight to see. Okay, and then I'm going to come back through on this side of the seam. And come through the back. Pull through. And then we're going to come over to the next ridge and continue as before. All right, so that's kind of how you address it. You just kind of have to play with it and get it centered up uh, to where it's going to lay nice and flat when you flip it over and nice and even. All right, continue on. I'll see you for seam three. Right, I have worked my seam um, one and two, and I am back on the front uh, with my marked uh, stitch marker here and uh, ready for seam three. We're gonna start uh, in the middle. This is the opening area, right in the very middle. And then we're gonna be working our way downward this way in this diagonal. We're gonna cover two squares because we've been covering three across. Now we're gonna go two across and then down and flip it over and work the next two. So when you flip it over, uh, you'll be going, um, you'll you'll be on uh, this side walking and uh, going that way. So it'll, um, flip it to the reverse and you'll be coming up uh, back up to the top on the other side and uh, so when then when you flip it over you'll be on the back and then you'll do the same thing it'll look like it's going the same direction and it's just going to cross so where you've got these two crossing here you're going to end up having uh, seam three and four done exactly the same way uh, crossing here so uh, once you get done you're going to uh, weave in all of your tails and um, complete it by um, turning it inside out so I'll show you once I get all of that sewn up turn it inside out and I'll show you uh, the remainder I have finished weaving in all of my tails after doing all the seams and seam three and four you can actually um, continuously do them so once you go from one side to the to the back um, and around like so you're going down here around you can actually when it, when it comes up it's going to come up here and then you can continue it on and finish it up and it's almost like it's one seam but it's these two angles right here so anyway once you do that go ahead and turn it inside out you can remove this uh, stitch marker from uh, what we were calling the front because you don't need that anymore and I did remove some of my stitch markers as I went along and I saw the seams um, so I could like look at it from the other side and just um, I grabbed the stitch markers that were there. The ones I left were the ones at the top here. So right at the top here is where um, you can take your um, handles. If you haven't made them already, go ahead and do that. Um, and then I just uh, clip them in to this very top uh, eyelid up here like that. And then flatten this up make sure they're all running in the same direction so that my cord isn't twist twisted and remove my stick stitch markers so then I've got one handle and then I've got my another my other handle remove your stitch markers and um, once you have that um, handle on there it makes it really easy if you have a steam iron you can just hold it up and then steam it with one hand and it will lay these seams down to so see you can see how it's bunched up here and if you remember my sample from the beginning um, it all these um, seams are laying down flatter and that's because I just held it up and I had like a travel steamer and I just kind of held the steam on these seams and it just opened it up really nicely and um, this is what it looks like without actually steaming it um, but I'll show you what it looks like um, when that's all finished you can um, you know contrast it with this one right here where I've flattened it out a bit more um, you could lay it down and pin it to block it but you can see how these seams are flatter than these ones here 
And um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed making your bag and um, have fun playing with different colors and making it your own. All right, thanks for staying tuned to Good Knit Kisses. Join us for more tutorials for knitting and crochet and loom knitting. Thanks for joining us today, where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.